how to read knitting patterns and follow written instructions. Hi everyone, Norman here. Only a couple of days ago I gave my subscribers the opportunity to ask me any questions in the community tab. And I was quite surprised to find out that a lot of you seem to struggle with reading knitting patterns. So in this video I want to show you how to follow a pattern with confidence and success. Let's dive right into it and show you how to make sense of knitting patterns. A pattern is the knitting equivalent of a recipe in cooking. It will tell you exactly how to replicate the results of a different knitter and possibly how to adjust the instructions so you can knit to measure. And just like one will find abbreviations uh, of, I don't know, a tablespoon or grams in a recipe, a knitting pattern is typically filled with little codes, terms, acronyms and abbreviations that may make things a bit confusing for a beginner. But worry not, we are going to decipher it together step by step. So I'm going to use my head pattern here as an example, but this will apply to any other pattern as well. A typical knitting pattern is a condensed nightmare of abbreviations, at least for a beginner. But a good knitting pattern will have a legend or a key that will help you make sense of it. But if it doesn't, I recommend checking out the knitting glossary on my blog. I'll put a link in the description below because here you can look up any term or abbreviation you don't understand. And by the way, make sure to comment uh, if uh, you would like uh, me to compile a PDF right now. It's just available online. But since you are all new to this, let's go through the ones you will need for this video together. So CO stands for cast on. So the technique you start your uh, pattern with. K stands for a knit or the knit stitch, can be either one. P means purl or the purl stitch. ST stands for stitches. So if you need to cast on seven stitches, you will find something like CO7ST. And R can either mean row or round, depending on your pattern. As I said, there are many more abbreviations. The knitting glossary in the description will certainly help you out. Being able to actually decipher the text is, however, only the first step. Think of it as knowing the words of a language without the grammar. Now don't be scared, the knitting language is actually fairly simple and you only need to know a couple of easy rules. First rows, you knit in rows. So all the stitches here on the needles uh, are one row. So your pattern will typically tell you exactly which stitches to knit in which row. So it typically looks like this. Row one, knit all stitches. Row two, purl all stitches. Of course, the pattern could also abbreviate it, this to R1, K, R2, P. So this is the exact same instruction, just a bit shorter. And so whatever follows the column are the instructions for that very row. And once you finished uh, with one row, you move on to the next row. You can cross it out or something and then you turn your work around and often the pattern rarely tells you to turn your work around. You need to do that yourself and then start knitting or purling as in this case on the other side. If your project is knit in the round, then it will typically say uh, round one, round two. So that is a very good indication of how your project is worked. If it says row, it should be knit flat. And if it says round, it should be in the round. The second thing you will notice is that uh, throughout a knitting stitch pattern, there are a lot of numbers. Numbers are not only used to count the rows, but also the stitches. So in a pattern, you will often find something like um, K 
seven, knit seven stitches. And it means you have to knit seven stitches in a row. So with that knowledge, the repeat for a typical uh, two by two rib stitch will probably make more sense uh, to, you, to you. So in this case, see out 10 stitches, cast on 10 stitches, row number one, knit two stitches, then purl two stitches, then knit two stitches, then purl two stitches, then knit two stitches. Then turn your work around and start knitting the second row, which starts with purl two stitches, knit two stitches, and so on. Commas always separate the commands. You could of course also write it out, but that would be probably a bit cumbersome. You do have to be careful because there are some abbreviations that actually involve numbers like knit two together, the easiest knitting, to, um, knitting decrease is abbreviated like this. So there is a uh, number involved or uh, you have make one left or something or make one right. So uh, these all involve numbers. So pay extra close attention if there is a comma separating the letters. Number three, brackets, asterisks and parentheses. If we quickly take another look at the previous example of the two by two rib stitch, you will notice that it's basically just repeating one general theme, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. And if you just cast on 10 stitches, then uh, writing it all out is no problem. But imagine you're knitting a big sweater where you have 50 or 100 stitches on your needles, then writing it all out would be a bit cumbersome. To solve this dilemma and save quite a lot of space, repeating knitting stitches are usually put between two asterisks. What is written between these little stars is thus referred to as a repeat. Let's take a look. So this says cast on 50 stitches and then row one, knit two, purl two. And then once you finished this repeat, you go back to the start and start all over, knit two, purl two. When you hit the end, go back, knit two, purl two. So you keep on repeating this repeat until the very end of the row and then you turn around and then you start with row number two where it's purl two, knit two, go back, purl two, knit two. If there is no further information, it means you have to repeat the stitches between the two asterisks until you reach the end of the row. But they can also appear in the middle of a row. So for example, like this, cast on 50 stitches, row one. And then it says, knit five stitches. And after those five stitches, you start the repeat with knit two, purl two. And then five stitches before the end of the row, you have to knit five. And then in row two, it's the same. Knit five, start with the repeat, repeat this all over again uh, until you are five stitches before the end. So this would be a way to write down a garter stitch edge. Instead of asterisks, you may also find brackets to indicate a group of stitches you have to repeat. Often brackets are used if it's a specific number of times you have to do so. So there will always be a quantifier directly behind the brackets. For example, in this case, this means knit five and then repeat knit two, purl two four times before you knit five. And last but certainly not least, you can also stumble across a repeat put in parenthesis. Typically, these are stitches you will work in the very same stitch, like bobbles or popcorn stitches. Then it could look like this, knit five and then knit one yarn over knit one. And this means that you have to knit one stitch, keep it on the needle, do a yarn over and then knit into the very same stitch one more time. In these cases, always check uh, the legend of the pattern or any additional information available to really figure out what this means. Sometimes parentheses can also be used to count a repeat. So for example, you can find uh, row one, knit two together six times, which would mean you have to do a knit two together decrease six times in a row. 
one note here. Sometimes a pattern will also tell you to repeat a certain number of rows or rounds a couple of times to save printing space. So it could be row one knit across all stitches, row two purl across all stitches and then repeat rows one and two six more times. So in this case this essentially would mean that you have to knit 14 rows in stock knit stitch. You already knitted two rows and then if you repeat that six more times it adds 12 uh, more rows in stock knit stitch. Good patterns will also have bold parts to highlight and structure a text. But you might also come across text in italics. In my patterns I use this to provide further information that is not fundamental to the pattern. So for example cast on 20 stitches, row 1 knit across, row 2 purl across and in row 3 you start decreasing with knit 2, knit 2 together. And in this case I provided the new stitch count so you can double check. You really decreased the right way and did not skip any stitches. And sometimes uh, there are rather complicated sections in a pattern or there are things I feel I want you to know. So for example in row 16 I want you to switch to a uh, two by two rib stitch and then it says you may want to switch to a needle size smaller for neither ribbings. Now you don't have to do this so use your common sense when reading these extra tidbits and decide for yourself what to do with them. Most patterns will also give you a couple of different size options. Typically a pattern will provide different sizing information using slashes. So it could look like this S, M, L, XL and double XL. And what you have to do in this case, you have to pick which uh, size you are. And so this is the position two. So when you go through the pattern you always only have to follow the instructions after the first a slash. So I actually recommend taking a pen or a pencil and then either uh, circle your uh, spot or cross out the other one. So in this case or here they had. So go through the pattern uh, before you start knitting so you don't end up accidentally knitting uh, following the wrong instructions. A very important section of every pattern is the gauge. Sadly a lot of knitting beginners seem to skip this section for all the wrong reasons. Mostly because they probably don't fully understand it and I guess they want to save time and start knitting right away. But here's the thing. No two knitters are alike and a designer has no way of knowing if you are a tight or a loose knitter. So the gauge is so to speak an attempt to create a common building block. It is saying if you can recreate a fabric like this using your technique, your needles, your yarn, then the rest of the pattern will work out. And otherwise it won't. Gauges typically measured based on a swatch. A little practice piece you knit as a preparation. Typically you will find three vital pieces of information. Size of the swatch, pattern for the swatch, resulting row and stitch count. And what can you do with this information? If the pattern says a 4x4 inch swatch in stock and knit stitch results in a width of 20 stitches and a height of 28 rows, you can modify your knitting until you can produce a swatch with these exact measurements. And once you did this, casting on, I don't know, 50 stitches will result in a size L. You could pick a thicker or a thinner yarn, you could go one needle size up or down or even try to uh, knit with a higher or lower tension to get gauge. But if you skip this part of the pattern, knitting the right uh, size becomes a game of chance with the odds stacked against you. As this is a somewhat complex topic, I'll link you to my full tutorial on how to get gauge and knit swatches up in here. Good patterns will also list all the materials you will need to finish the project. So there will typically be a brand name or the name of the yarn that was used for the sample knits, the needles that were being used and additional tools like stitch markers, scissors, tapestry needle and so on. And this information is quite vital and you should go through the list before you start knitting and check if you actually have everything. Also be careful if you want to pick a different yarn or a 
different needle size, it will result in a different fabric. So as a beginner, I actually urge you to stick to these recommendations. Later on, you will learn how to substitute yarn, but that is a very complex topic for another video. Now, some patterns may include charts and charts can be incredibly complicated, at least at first glance. I have a full video on reading charts here on YouTube. I'll link it to you up in here. So I want to keep this section as short as possible. The key to understanding a chart is realizing that it is not a chart. A chart depicts a mathematical formula. So maybe like this. But a knitting chart is nothing else but condensed writing. So whenever I hear I can't read charts, I prefer written instructions that literally makes no sense. The only difference is that you abbreviate a purl stitch, not with a P, but with a filled dot. And that you separate stitches, not with commas, but with boxes. So I can write the following lace a pattern like this, maybe purl one, purl one, then do a yarn over, knit two together and then purl another two stitches. Or I write it like this, following the actual knitting direction from right to left. So I use a purl stitch, then I do another purl stitch and these really look like pearls. Then I have a yarn over, so I use a circle and then I have a knit two together, so I use a slash because it's leaning to the right and then we have another two of these pearls and if I put this into boxes I have my chart but actually the difference is or you just need to learn that it is condensed writing with a different reading order and just like you learn that P stands for pearl you need to learn these new abbreviations. Either way, check out my full video on reading charts. Uh, I also put a link in the description below. Here towards the end of the video, I want to highlight a couple of frequent mistakes. Number one, not keeping track of your progress. I never truly understand how my brain works. I can tell you what I was wearing as a guest on a wedding 20 years ago, but when I cast on knitting stitches, I can barely count beyond 20 before I lose track. It's infuriating. So assuming you don't have a super brain, I really advise you to keep track of the progress in your pattern. Use post-its to mark the current row you are working on, or use a pencil uh, or a pen to cross out the stitches um, or rows um, you already finished and keep track of the knitting using stitch markers. So this can be very helpful to count the rows or mark the beginning of a complicated repeat or salvage stitches, things like that. You never know when you're going to pick up a project again. Life happens. There could be someone at the door. Uh, there could be a call forcing you to re reschedule your plans for tomorrow. And two weeks later, you don't remember if you repeated those rows six or eight times. Issue number two, not reading the complete knitting pattern. Please, 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 please do me a favor and read a pattern all the way to the end before you knit your first stitch. You can't imagine how often I receive a question that could have easily been answered if only they would have read the whole pattern. But also sometimes a pattern provides you with additional information further down below you might otherwise miss. Or maybe the cast on tail is used to things together and if your tail is only two inches that's not going to work out. So it's very important to read the full pattern before you start. Issue number three, adding stitches where none are supposed to be. I don't think a single day passes where I don't receive a question regarding the stitch count in an increase row. Apparently a lot of people uh, believe that a yarn over was attached to the following or preceding stitch. So you cannot knit a yarn over in and by itself. It needs a stitch before and after it. But these stitches are not part of the yarn over. So if there is a line that says knit one yarn over, knit one yarn over, knit one, that's altogether five stitches you are knitting and five stitches should be on your needle. Every abbreviation between a comma is a different stitch. This also applies to KLL, knit left loop and other such increases. The knit stitch before and after that increase are not part of it. 
And here's one last issue, miscounting increase and decrease combinations. So say you have the line knit two yarn over knit two together and knit one. That's five stitches. Even though you work through six stitches, yes, the knit two together is using two stitches, but the result will be just one. So I had someone count this row like two, one, two, one stitches resulting in six stitches, but that is wrong. If you have a stitch count in a row or a chart, it only applies to the result and never to the stitches you work through. Anyway, that's how to read knitting patterns. Please like this video if you enjoyed watching, comment with your feedback and your questions. And of course, don't forget to subscribe in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.